Hello friends, I am Dr. Rahul Gupta at Fortis Hospital Noida and today we will tie, discuss about a type of brain hemorrhage that is known as subarachnoid hemorrhage and its management. So subarachnoid hemorrhage basically presents as a sudden severe headache, a type of headache which has never occurred before in the life. Sometimes this type of headache is associated with vomiting, unconsciousness, limb paralysis or seizures. Such type of headache should never be neglected. We should reach immediately to a center where facilities of CT scan, angiography and neurosurgeon is available. So today I will show you a video how we manage these patients. So whenever such a patient comes to us in the emergency with sudden severe headache, even if the patient is conscious, alert and oriented, we subject him to a CT scan of the brain. A plain CT scan of the brain is a very good investigation to diagnose any type of hemorrhage which has occurred in the brain. If the CT scan shows a subarachnoid hemorrhage, then we are alarmed. This can be because of an aneurysm rupture. So aneurysm basically is an outpouching in the vessel wall in the brain which ruptures and leads to subarachnoid hemorrhage. So such a condition is treatable, it can be managed well so that that blood vessel doesn't rupture against and so to prevent this re-bleed, we do the surgical procedure. So once we detect a subarachnoid hemorrhage in a patient, we immediately order for an angiography. The angiography can be a DSA which is a light type of angiography, a real time angiography which is done in a neurocath lab like we do it for the heart. Or it can be a CT angiography which can be done on a CT scan machine which gives the static images of the uh, aneurysm and the blood vessels or we can go for an MR angiography. So problems with angiography is that if we are going to give a dye, the patient's renal system should be in place. There should not be any chronic renal failure or an acute renal failure. Otherwise that dye may be harmful to the patient. Apart from them, there is no, no, no contraindication for any type of angiography. So once an angiography is done, then we detect the aneurysm and once an aneurysm is detected, we plan the treatment. So what are the options of treatment of an aneurysm? So any aneurysm of the brain needs a surgical treatment which is either in the form of craniotomy and clipping the aneurysm or we can go the endovascular way in the neurocath lab where we go from inside the blood vessel and coil the aneurysm or place a stent or new device into the aneurysm so as to disrupt the blood supply into the aneurysm. So once the aneurysm is devoid of any blood flow, it won't rupture again. So both the procedures are good, both the procedures are possible in most of the cases. There are very few cases where only clipping is possible or there are some cases where only the endovascular procedure is uh, possible. So after discussion with the attendants, the best procedure is opted for the patient and we do it. So today I will talk about clipping of the aneurysm. It's a time tested method of treating the aneurysm. It has been there for almost uh, several decades and now with advances in microscope, uh, DSA and other uh, gadgets. For last 10 to 20 years, successful and safe aneurysm clipping is being done at many centers in this country, including ours. So I have an experience of clipping almost 1000 aneurysms over the years. So today I will show you the video where we will show you how we had clipped a anterior communicating artery aneurysm, which is the most common type of aneurysm that I have experienced in my lifetime in my career as a neurosurgeon. So for that, we require special operation table, a special team of neuroanesthetists who look after the patient during the surgery and we fix the head on a head frame in a particular position and we enter the brain from the right or the left side depending on which artery is dominant and through which artery this aneurysm is filling. And once we give an incision, we reflect the skin flap and we open the skull which is usually small just above the eyeball and we enter the brain. So once we expose the brain, I will show you in the video how we proceed. So this is the video where we have uh, opened the skull and exposed the brain and once the brain is exposed, we expose the frontal and the temporal lobes. Between the frontal and the temporal lobe, there is a potential space which is known as the sylvian fissure. We open the sylvian fissure by sharp dissection as well as by the blunt dissection with the help of a dissector. And once we have opened the sylvian fissure, we expose the optic nerve of the same side along with the internal carotid artery. Once this internal carotid artery and the optic nerve are exposed, we know that now we have to go towards the endosome. So once now we can see on the screen how nicely the uh, uh, optic nerve and the ICA are visible and once they are visible we suck out the blood from around them open more uh, natural uh, spaces like anterior interhemispheric fissure again it's a dark, sharp dissection with the help of uh, 
the needle so you can see this is the microscopic view very high quality microscope is being used in this case to open the uh, brain uh, spaces and once we open the brain spaces we find a lobe which is known as the gyrus rectus so this gyrus rectus is lying just over the aneurysm we suck a little part of the gyrus rectus so as to expose the aneurysm in this case we have we are seeing the uh, arteries which are around the aneurysm so this aneurysm is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery arising from the internal carotid artery of one side opposite side internal uh, carotid artery is not visible but the anterior cerebral artery is visible which is supplying the aneurysm and we can see the two vessels important vessels the distal anterior cerebral arteries which are arising from the side of the aneurysms we use a temporary clip to restrict the flow of blood into the aneurysm so that this aneurysm becomes supple and uh, the thin wall of the aneurysm doesn't rupture again during the procedure. So once we uh, put the temporary clip, we dissect the aneurysm further, you can see how the side walls of the aneurysm are being dissected, blood is being sucked and we are defining the neck of the aneurysm means the area from which this aneurysm is originating. So what we the response the duty is the to clip the aneurysm to put a clip you can see how the clip is being placed across the neck of the aneurysm safeguarding all the normal vessels so we can see the four vessels which are around the aneurysm two vessels supplying the aneurysm and two vessels uh, they are coming from the side of the aneurysm so all those vessels are saved only the neck of the aneurysm is being uh, clipped so that there is no circulation of blood into the aneurysm once we are able to successfully clip the aneurysm we remove the temporary clips and we ensure that the normal vessels are functioning this can be done with the help of a, a doppler probe or we can do intraoperative fluorescence angiography and check that the vessels are filling well the clip can be readjusted several times or a new clip can be applied if we think that that clip is not normal after doppler or after intraoperative uh, fluorescence angiography so this type of surgery is a very high end surgery which is being performed with the help of very high end microscope under the supervision of good quality uh, uh, neuro anesthetists, neuro uh, staff nurses, neuro technicians in the operation theater which is acute with all the gadgets which are required. Sometimes the aneurysm may rupture in that case the role of the assistant surgeon is very important. Uh, he sucks out the extra blood and quickly a temporary clip is applied and a permanent clip is applied over the uh, Aneurysm. So the intraoperative rupture is usually the most challenging part of these type of surgeries which makes it a difficult and a high end surgery where all the which should be performed at a center where all the facilities are available. Rarely we uh, even uh, arrest the heart for 2 to 3 minutes in case there is a rupture and nothing is visible a lot of blood bleeding is there so that we can identify the aneurysm neck carefully and apply a clip across the neck. So these type of surgeries are routinely being performed at our center by me and my colleagues and uh, we have good results so whenever there is a sudden severe headache we should not neglect that reach a hospital where all the facilities of neurosurgical procedures are available and we can go ahead with uh, any type of uh, surgical procedure which is required either clipping or coiling or stent placement in an aneurysm so that we can prevent a re-bleed Subtype, such type of subarachnoid hemorrhages sometimes are associated with vasospasm and if there is a vasospasm because of the presence of the blood which has already uh, which is already there after the rupture of the aneurysm so that vasospasm is important to be treated by medicines for initial uh, 21 days after that the blood disappears and there is no vasospasm noted so uh, the initial management of such type of cases for 10 to 15 days is very crucial which is done in the ICU or in the ward depending on the clinical condition of the patient uh, definitely it costs a lot but uh, it, it can be life-saving and once this disease is cured a permanent cure is achieved the chances of re-rupture of that same aneurysm is very uncommon so uh, I hope you have liked this video how uh, we have dealt with an aneurysm uh, which was arising from the anterior communicating artery aneurysm by the method of clipping in my next video I will show you how a coiling uh, procedure is done thank you very much